Hallelujah, hallelujah. Can we just bless the name of the Lord? Praise God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, welcome family, welcome church. Santi Brook to look friendly, keep up to look like it in Tatush. Elin Dresu, Kru Brakalidin, Green the Bull, Santi Brakili, Hirkir, Gosh, Kisi, Mirakulu, Tramadi, Tifan, Tribita. Mentally grown to look over the Tifeli Cross, Santa Mahas, Kishin, Tamalu, Gridita, Lakushka. Rekili Trus, Kumpramili, Credit in the Rue, Lakura, Kasha, the Trisip to Crow to Kil Brak to Kumbra Paladiska. Lake Korokos Kishin to Green de la Koshka, sick to crow the Kibra Hala Korokoshki, sick to room from Mumboluka City Kalaha. Lake Kos Koshka, sick to crow the Kibra de Kira Koshka, sook to her color brook to Koshka Sakiha. Uru Brandley Hirikara Koshki, sick to retain the Moro Kuliki, practically green to the Hoshka Saki, practical sook to a brandy Hilatashka. Come on, begin to bless the name of the Lord, Rekotush Katak, the Kilmun, the Brahali Kriti Flakaska, and the British. Liri Karakosh Kizim of Rotikili Hantulokos Kasimi Bradley Krotikus Saradata Saranin Grinin 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 Hallelujah. Father, we bless your holy name. We give you praise. We give you the glory. Rakula Tris Kuntu Brandikir Kuradesh Itilin Tramodus Karakidin Mikura Kaladushka. Father, we worship you. Rakula Krandiki Bora Kinda Mahor Kitiki Sakura Kum Brindin Nanadush. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Rakut Yanturu Krakila Taska. In Krindin Telokrut Kelatu Bukusi Krindin Nanakuska Prati Ekladish. We worship you, Lord. Rakala Bahushka. Can we just bless the name of the Lord? It is a great thing to serve the Lord. Rectly, mantras, kulu, practically, in the Nikora, Klaku, Bosch, and the Brain, the Lakosa, Talaha. Oh, give a praise. Thank God for the love privilege. Like to cut your seat at his feet. Like thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Sekura, Tushkalaha, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, Rakula Pratiku Shada Lamoski. In Grantele Credit Gila Pranti Pidim Pedu Kushkus, Pranti Gila Kratikis, and Hortaluk Barakadishi, the Hela Kosh. Man shall not live by bread alone, they didn't grow to the Kubarakash Kasabot, by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Speak, Lord, Rekadiko Shadakala Prakidiki. We need to hear from you, Rakadiko Zian Kranimo Polaroska. Ikridini Murakudiki Santo Krukudiki Barakush Kasin Terehalakosha. We give a glory, Lord, Rakola Moshan Trigili Krik to Maruti Mraktika de Mifila Tras Kuntiki Marade Tolamavriti and Gredita. A secret in Natush Kasahala Boshadaha. Alien Grundukura Boka Shalahaski, Zing Green de la Trusura Procti Gere Fractalaha, Zakura Bosha, the Kahali Green to Sukratically Herakosha. Who is wonderful? Is Jesus 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 who is wonderful? Oh, who is wonderful? Is Jesus who is wonderful? Is Jesus who is wonderful? Is Jesus who is wonderful? Oh, shout hallelujah, hallelujah, shout hallelujah, hallelujah, shout hallelujah, hallelujah, shout hallelujah. Oh, who is wonderful? Is Jesus 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 who is marvelous? 
is Jesus, who is wonderful. Oh, who is wonderful? Is Jesus, who is wonderful? Oh, shout hallelujah, hallelujah, shout hallelujah, hallelujah, shout hallelujah, hallelujah, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah, shout hallelujah, hallelujah, shout hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, who is wonderful, who is Jesus, who is wonderful. Oh, won't you praise him now, I'll praise him, won't you praise him now, I will praise him. Won't you shout for him, I'll shout for him, hallelujah, hallelujah. Ora galaza na tosisa, ligerita, ligerida rosita, ligerida, maracoliza to, shanadao su yeshida na tosita. Oh, who is wonderful, is Jesus, who is wonderful. Oh, shout hallelujah, hallelujah, shout hallelujah. Oh, shout of hallelujah, hallelujah, shout of hallelujah. Oh, shout of hallelujah, hallelujah, shout of hallelujah, hallelujah, shout of hallelujah, hallelujah, shout of hallelujah. Oh, who is wonderful, Jesus, who is wonderful. Oh, shout hallelujah, hallelujah, shout hallelujah, oh, shout hallelujah, oh, shout hallelujah, oh, shout hallelujah, hallelujah, shout hallelujah, hallelujah. Can we just begin to bless the name of the Lord? Let's give him praise, family. Let's worship him. He's worthy of our praise. Rakala to Kushkasa, he's the great I am. Rokodika Sakti Grindin in the Kura di Dadash. Oro Bolo Rabakala Kanime Shatala Kredikin or Kula Pratiki Santrin in the Lakosia. He break Rekoko Shantamaliki Frakti Grin Telatos Kirin Doloko Rabadiatos. In Grinin Nalakos Giatrodo Kuratodo Braka di Dimizaf the Ekradinta. Mosu Bradike the Kushka Santri Gedetolo Rokodush. He cradicly marudo satana mundri kila dosh, mundri kila dosh, mundri kila dosh, shata kuruti tiato, maricle dico sata, maricle dito sata, moroclo tise pata, incrende nito suto, maragli dico sata, milkita da habakos shatica harke de bronte game, brandy clinger de gusada, ericere cura de cushanda bracilito lu vandigilita sato lucusciti, ericetu mocroco lu brandiki santa cruma lucusite cara dico santi, Erikira Bula Kodi Siti Krandu Kubra Nina Zato, Rekido Broti Satalaba. We worship you, Lako Sasa Prahad Kishkandaha. Father, we give you praise, we thank you, Lord Praktiki Shadaha, for another opportunity, Le Krapulu Kradiki Pako Kus Sataha, to sit at the feet, Lord Jesus, Sakala Kriba, the Bible says, Zetelaka, I rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than to dwell in the tabernacles. Of the wicked Rakute, I rather be a doorkeeper, Kalako. Oh, how I love thy law. Lekashka Salahash, Kuziki Pradikela Turaka. Oh, how I love thy law. It's my meditation all day. It's my meditation all night. Zikalaha. Lekrotika Sataka, Umbrin di Kurotike Shada, Rikeli Broti and de la Kuska Shalaha. Letre la Bosa. Father, we give a praise, we give you the glory. Rapu Karebogo Shanti Green de la Truskelahargi. Malako Digesala, Lord, thank you for this opportunity, Lord. Rekala to communion with you. He says, truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Of course, you are in this fellowship this evening. Praktulaka to minister, to feed all circular. And we will never be the same as we we'll look. We are transformed into the same image from glory to glory as by the Spirit of the Lord. Rakola Pratike Satalaha. Lekra, for faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of the Lord. For faith comes by hearing. Then our crow practices shantika. Faith shall come to us, and the word of God shall be mixed with faith in our hearts to produce the desired results. Sati kalahosh kisim practical rakadosh. 
Incredible. Hell, now are we therefore present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of God. Lord, we want to hear what you are saying. For man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of your mouth. Lord, we don't want to miss anything that you're saying to us for this season. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you praise, Lord. We give you the glory. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. I want you to, hallelujah. Welcome, family. Welcome, every one of you streaming online. Wherever you are from across the globe, welcome. God bless you all. Call someone on the phone. Tell them it's time for the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Tell them it's time to, to listen, to sit at the feet of Jesus. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but this word shall not pass away. Whether you believe it or not, it's standard sure. Nevertheless, the Bible says the foundation of God standard sure. It doesn't matter what anybody believes. It doesn't matter what anybody thinks. It doesn't matter what anybody does. Heaven and earth shall pass away. Jesus said, this word shall not pass away. Simple. The Bible says, the word liveth and abideth forevermore. And anyone who does the word of God, the Bible says, he shall also abide forevermore. Then what else are we talking about? Why breaking your head and... Um, Disturbing yourself over, over things. The Bible says the lust of this, this word passeth away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Why breaking your head over things that will not abide forever? The Bible says, Why we will look not at the things which are seen? We should not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things that are seen are temporal. Today you see them, to, tomorrow you don't see them. The stock market is up today, tomorrow is down. Look at how the economy of this world. I just gone down within a few days and within a few weeks. What is it? What is it? The Bible says, Woe unto the man whose trust is in another man, whose trust is in the flesh, and doesn't trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, it says, Acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. He is the ancient of the days. He liveth forevermore. He was, he is, and he is to come. Nothing takes him by surprise. He sits upon the circle of the earth. He has all power in his hands. I am that I am. I am that I am is his name. Not afraid of anybody. Not afraid of any king. Kings and kingdoms shall all pass away. Lakobara king, the king of kings and the lord of lords, liveth forevermore. He said unto John in Revelation chapter number one, he says, I am he that liveth and was dead and am alive forevermore. The Bible says, in that he died, he died unto sin once. And in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. He died unto sin once. He can never die again. He can never die. I am he that liveth. I was dead. I never remained dead. I'm alive forevermore. Hallelujah. Let's just worship him one more time. Santa Colaba. Father, we give you praise. Thank you, Lord, for this evening with Jesus. Lord, our spirits are open to receive, Lord, your word. Thank you for what you shall do, O oh God, in the lives of your people today. No one, O oh God, under the sound of my voice shall live the same way the king. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. You shall meet each and every one of them in their homes like never before. Father, we give you praise for what you're doing in our world today. We thank you for the development so far. We bless your holy name because you are the only one who can heal our land. And Lord, you're doing something, you are doing something already. We bless your holy name. We give you praise. We give you the glory. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Welcome. I welcome all of you one more time. God bless you all. Tell your neighbor we are on. Tell your neighbor, call someone on the phone. Tell them to come on. We are on. Praise God. We are on on live. Oh, we are live on Facebook, the New Creation Ministry Barcelona. And we are also live on this YouTube channel right now. Praise God. Because it's our midweek service. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. This is the New Creation Ministry International. Living a purposeful life, the best place to worship in the land, in Barcelona, Rapoloko, Shadahasia. And this is remains your pastor, Pastor Go, Weze. One, not two. 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I did not improvise myself. I'm just who he says. Who he said I should be. I'm just, I'm just enjoying myself in the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Doing my stuff. The way he asked me to do it. There are differences of, differences of administration, but the same Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. No two pastors are expected to be the same. Or else God will not, there will be no need for another one. Like Toyota and uh, and uh, Mercedes, they are not the same thing, even though they are the same cars. Praise the Lord. Even this, they can serve the same peoples. Uh, they are different stuff. Praise God. Hallelujah. We still are going to look into something that is very profound today. Our topic today is warning to the nations. The earth is being watched. The earth is being watched. This earth is being watched. Is warning to the nations. This earth is being watched. Child of God, tell someone to share it on Facebook, uh, create a watch party, let them watch with you. This earth is being watched. So it is a warning to the nations. Praise the Lord. Now, first of all, um, start from the book of Genesis, chapter number one. Let me tell you something about the earth. Genesis chapter number one, we are going to read from verse one into verse number three. Genesis, the first book of Genesis. Please get your Bibles, get your writing materials. I don't know if that brother is online who helps us to put it on the live, the live chat on YouTube. But in the absence of that, get your Bibles, get your writing materials, and let's get into this into the Word of God because by 8 o'clock we are going to be done. Thank you, brother. God bless you. Genesis chapter number 1, we are reading from verse 1 into verse number 3. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Stop. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. God created it. In the beginning, Elohim, the, the word there, the Hebrew word there for God is Elohim, which is the plural form of God, which has to do with God the Father, the Son, or the Word, and the Holy Ghost. God the Father, the Word, who that word who finally became flesh, or which finally became flesh, Jesus, the Father, the Word, because the Bible tells us in John chapter number one and verse one, the Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, that is in the beginning of the Word, in the beginning when the Word was created, the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse two, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, all things were made by Him. So the Bible tells us in the beginning, God created the heaven. And the earth. So the earth is something created by God. The earth was created by God. That is number one point you must understand. We must establish that, that the earth is created by God or was created by God. Verse 2. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. I'm still on that first point. The earth was created by God. The Bible says in verse 2, and the earth was without form. When God created it, the Bible says it was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Even though theologians tell us that there's so much that happened between verse 1 and verse 2 of the book of Genesis, but that's not all I'm going to. I'm not going to all that now because when I get into all that, we'll not live here today. And just to let some who just listen and just, just some kind of conclusion to know that I also am aware of what they say the theologians tell us about the first, the verse 1 and verse 2. I'm aware of that. God bless you. Keep that to yourself. Hallelujah. The Bible says there was the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now, I want to say something in verse number two. The Bible says, when darkness was upon the face of the deep. Okay, let's read verse three and add that to it. So I'll tell you what I want to say. Praise God. But remember in verse two, the Bible says the earth was without form and void. So when the earth was without form and void, the Bible said the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Verse 3, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. Now, if you, if you keep going down, God said, let there be this, and this came to pass. God, let there, God said, let there be this. The first day, the evening and the morning, we are the first day, and the evening and the morning, the second day, he created certain things, different things. In the fourth day, the second day, the third day, the fourth day, the fifth day, the sixth day. The sixth day, he created man. Praise God. But I want to see, help you see something here before I get back to my verse 1. The Bible says the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And nobody helped God to 
to remove the darkness. No, nobody had God, no scientists, no uh, technologists, no, uh, nobody helped him because he created it. He didn't ask any man for help. What are we going to do now? Now there's darkness everywhere. Nobody helped him out. He didn't call for help from anybody. When it was without form, that means it was shapeless. And darkness was upon, upon the face of the deep. There was so much darkness. And the Bible said the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Water covered everywhere. Now, if you start reading, which we don't have time to go, you find out that God separated the waters and the land and all that and all that and caused trees to come up and all that, which I want you to bear in mind. But when there was chaos, when it was shapeless, formless, no man helped God. God did not call for anybody's help. He did it all alone. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. I want to establish this first point, that the earth was created by God. It wasn't something, it did not come from a big blast. In Psalm chapter number 24 and verse number 1, Psalm chapter 24, verse number 1, let's read that again. Psalm chapter 24. It might look very simple, but it's profound that the earth, that you can see we know that. I know what I'm talking about because we are dealing with the earth is being washed. Is warning to the nations, the earth is being watched. Psalm chapter 24 and verse number 1. Psalm chapter 24 and verse number 1. The Bible says, the earth is the laws, the fullness thereof, the world and them that dwell therein. The earth is the laws. Belongs to the Lord because he created it. He created it. The earth is the Lord. Isaiah 44, let's see verse 24. We read it last night, I think. But I just want to draw a line there for you just to remind you. Isaiah 44 and verse 24. The earth is the Lord's. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In the beginning, and like physics tells us, the beginning time, um, God created the heaven, space, and the earth matter because the three of them must appear, must show up simultaneously. Time, space, and matter. Time, space, and matter. Which if they try to tell us that the, the, that the earth came by a blast and it came to be when and what was the space so much questions concerning that what was the matter what was that that exploded when so what space did he occupy they can't answer that question but that verse one only answers the three questions time space and matter now we are in Isaiah chapter 44 and verse number 24, the Bible says, Thus said the Lord, the, re the Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb. I want, to see, I want you to see the formation of the womb and the link to the earth. Just like we saw that, that there is a link between the earth and the earth and the world and the people that dwell therein in Psalm chapter number 24 when he says, the earth is the loss, the fullness thereof. The world and them that dwell during his, he always links the earth and people. The earth is the laws, the fullness thereof, the world and them that dwell during, they all belong to the Lord. Now, in Isaiah chapter 44, verse 24, he said, Thus said the Lord, thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb, I am God that maketh all things, that stretched forth the heavens alone. I stretch forth the heavens alone. Nobody can come up tomorrow to argue this with God. And the Bible says, I spread it abroad the earth by myself, by myself. I did it by myself. I never needed any scientist or, or technologist help to get it done. Nobody, no historian, no philosopher's help. I did it all by myself. I did it all by myself. And Jehovah God lays claim to the entire world. And like I said, look at there's a link between humans. He said, I formed you from the womb. 
and stretched forth the heavens, stretched forth the heavens alone, and spread it abroad the earth by myself. That's where a songwriter says, You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. He's the creator of the heavens and the earth. There's no place for argument. I want us to establish that fact. Our topic is the earth is being watched. Warning to the nations. Now, when God created, that's number one point. We've just established it from scriptures. There are several scriptures to prove that, but because, because of time, we'll not get to all that scriptures. So God created the earth and he created it for a purpose. Now we're going to point two. He created it for a purpose. I've just given you some of the points I created, I, I just talked about right now. I've just given you this, the purpose somehow. Praise God. He created it for a purpose. And that purpose is for it to be inhabited by man. Let's go to the same book of Genesis. Remember in chapter one, in chapter one, of the book of Genesis, verse 1, we read, for in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And in verse 3, the, God, the Bible says, and God said, let there be light. So in Genesis chapter number 1, verse 1, he created the heaven and the earth. Now let's go to the same Genesis chapter 1, let's go to verse 26, let's read from verse 26 into verse 28. Genesis chapter number 1. Let's go back to verse 26 to verse 28. Ikarapako shantikrini matala grata. Devakosh kasantrikide na namako shadha. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. I will trust in you. Please, I want you to follow this. And I will trust in you. All right, the Bible says, and God said, this is on the sixth day, and God said, let us make man in our image. After our likeness, and let them, let this man have, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, all this earth that he created, let man have dominion over the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Now, I want you to see, God said, let them have dominion, over the fish, over the sea of the fish, over all the fowl of the earth, over the cattle, and over all, all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. But Bible did not say they should create, they should have dominion over the fellow men. But they should have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, or the birds, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeped upon the earth, but not over the fellow men. Now, verse 27, verse 27, the Bible says, so God created man in his own image. So God created man for a purpose. In his own image, in the image of God, created he, him, male and female, created he them. And God blessed them and said unto them, now look, this is verse 28, God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Like I told you, there was something they said there's a difference between the verse 1 and verse 2, which if you say replenish the earth, it also means something else, which I'm not going to go into that. that that's not where I'm going to. But they just go in the direction we are going to. Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. That means fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. That's what God said to man. So have, be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. Cover the entire earth. Very important. I want you to take note of that. I want you to take note of that. So God puts into, the, into, into man the desire to reproduce. 
That's why today, if a family, a man or a woman doesn't have a child, he, he fights it. Or they fight it, she or he. They fight it. They want to have a child. Because there's this desire put in the spirit of man. Because when God was addressing this in Genesis chapter number 1, 26 to 28, that we just read, God was dealing with the spirit of man. Because in chapter number 2, he formed the man, he formed this man out of the dust of the earth and breathed into man that spirit that he already created in himself. He breathed it into man, all right, into the man formed by the dust of the earth. He put it into man. In Genesis chapter number two, and the Bible says man became a living soul. So when death happens, it's just that spirit that leads the man. The body returns the dust. The body returns to the dust of the earth, and the spirit now goes to heaven or hell, depending on the choices the person made here on earth. So God was dealing with the spirit of this man. So in the spirit of man is the ability or the 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 yes, the ability to reproduce and also the desire to reproduce. Everybody also wants to have their own child. When, when, when somebody is not really designed to have a child or something, you know that something is wrong somewhere. When they are married, the next thing they are looking for, they want to have their own children. Or at least their own child. And that's why certain barrenness is not natural. It's not, it's not normal. It's an attack. Barrenness is an attack from hell. That's why through prayer we can break barrenness. So that the eternal plan, the first, the eternal plan of God or the will of God concerning this earth will be fulfilled. Of reproducing. Be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. Because the Bible tells us in Psalm chapter 115 and verse number 16. Please follow me, I'm going somewhere. Follow me, please. Psalm 115 and verse number 16. The Bible says the heavens, even the heavens, are the laws. Psalm 115, verse number 16. The heavens, even the heavens, are the laws. But the earth hath he given to the children of men. The earth he has given to the children of men. So in verse, in, on the sixth day, after God created every other thing, man was the last thing he created on the sixth day. The Bible says, God said to man, replenish the earth and take over, replenish, multiply, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, fill this earth. Mm. So because the Bible says in this psalm now, you have just said the earth he has given to the children of men. So he gave children of men, the, the sons of men, he gave, it, he gave the earth to them and said, this place is your domain. You multiply and replenish. Cover everywhere. Hallelujah. So the purpose for creating the earth is for man. Let's, let's go to the book of Isaiah, chapter number 45. Let's read verse number 18. God created the earth for man to live in. Isaiah, chapter 45. Let's go to verse number 18. I'm taking you somewhere. Just follow me. I'm just gradually taking you from one step to another so that you don't miss me when I get when I arrive. I want you to follow me. Tell someone to come online. We're on air now. Hallelujah. Isaiah 45 and verse number 18. Remember we just read in Psalm chapter 115 and verse 16. The heavens and the heavens are the laws. The earth hath he given to the children of men. So that is why that is why even in eternity when Jesus shows up, we are going to be with him in heaven just for seven years and he will come back on earth and we'll all come back together with him on earth and he's going to rule this world for 1,000 years, setting up his capital in Jerusalem. He's going to rule this world after one, for 1,000 years and after that 1,000 years, there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth and the Bible talks about, the, the, uh, about the, the new Jerusalem which we are also going to live in but it's going to be here in the earth. So we're going to be on earth forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And the Bible says God himself shall tabernacle with us. The tabernacle of God is with me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So he created the earth and said man should live here. He created the earth for man. 
Now, Isaiah chapter 45, chapter 45, and verse number 18. It says, For thou said the Lord that created the heavens. This is what the Lord who created the heaven is saying. God himself that formed the earth and made it. He established it. God made the earth. He established it. He created it not in vain. Look at this. He created it not in vain. Not without a purpose. He created it for a purpose. That's what the Bible says. When it says he created it not in vain, it means not without a purpose. Not in vain. It's for a purpose. Then it says, he created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is none else. This is God speaking here. God said he created this earth not in vain, but to be inhabited. He formed it to be inhabited. To be inhabited by who? By men. The earth he has given to the sons of men. Let us create man. Let us make man in our own image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the earth. Over all the earth. Over the, 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 fish, the fish in the sea. Over everything in the sea. Over the, the fowls of the air. Over everything. Over the creeping things that creep upon the earth. The Bible says. He created it for man. For man to inhabit, for, to be inhabited. That was why when he finished, I said man was what he created on the sixth day. When he finished and looked at the whole thing, he knew that yes, there was still one more thing. The one who is going to take charge of the earth. And he created man and, tell, and told man, listen, take charge of everything. He formed it to be inhabited, not by angels, not by demons, but to be inhabited. That means to be lived in by men. I'm taking you somewhere. We go to the book of Acts, chapter number 17. Let's start reading from verse 24. We're going to read verse 24. We're going to read verse 25. We're going to read verse 26. Acts, the book of Acts, chapter number 17, 24 to 26. Remember, he, he created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. That's why he told them, multiply, be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. Not to replenish one particular continent, but replenish the earth. The earth has to do with all the continents in this world. Replenish the earth. Because he created it to be inhabited. The book of Acts number 17, we're reading from verse 24 to verse 28. God that made the world and all things therein is God who made the world. We started seeing that from the beginning. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth. Whether they like it or not, God created the heaven and the earth, and he is Lord of heaven and the earth. Just because man has gone to the moon doesn't mean that there is no God anymore. The moon you're talking about, who created it? It's also, it also came out from a blast. And you told me that when I see a, a, a pen or something on the floor, I should not think, according to science, I shouldn't think that it just appeared. I should know that someone, someone made it. Now you're telling us that the earth also just appeared. There is the Lord. So the Bible says, God that made the world and all things there is seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. This is God doesn't dwell with temples made in hands. That is why, even that we look, even as even after the doors of the churches of the buildings are closed, we are still having fellowship. Having great time. Having great time. Because it's not about him dwelling in the place, in the building. He says he said, doesn't dwell in temples made with hands. The, the verse 25. Neither is worshipped 
by men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he gave it to all life and breath and all things. You know, sometimes people think that God needs something. God says something in the book of Psalm chapter number 50. He said, if I were hungry, I would not tell you. When they tell people maybe something about giving to God or maybe tithe and offering and stuff like that, they think that, hey, they're the ones doing, uh, giving, they, 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 they think that they are helping God. You're not helping God. It's just for your own personal good. The Bible says it's not as if he needs anything from man. Neither is worship by man's hand as though he needed anything. This God who created everything, how can he be in need of anything? If he were in need, in such a number of 50, he said, if I was hungry, if I were hungry, I would not tell you. Just because I ask you to bring sacrifices and lay on the altar and stuff like that, they are for your good. That's what God was trying to say. But we are going somewhere. Verse 26 now. He gave it all life and breath and all things. The Bible says, verse 26, and had made, remember he's talking about God, and had made of one blood all nations of men. That's why we are looking at the earth is being washed, warning to the nations. The Bible says, God made of all blood and had made of one blood all nations of men. One blood, that's Adam. All nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth. His purpose is that men would dwell on all the face of the earth and had determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitations. God's plan is that men would dwell upon all the face of the earth. Remember in that Genesis chapter number one, can we? I don't know. If you read from verse 9 into verse number 10, the Bible tells us how he separated the waters and the dry land appeared. And the dry land he called the earth or ground. All right. And God's plan is that upon all this face of the earth and not on the waters, upon the face of the earth, if you, you can study that Genesis chapter number 1, verse 9 and verse number 10, those two verses, the Bible tells us that. All right. So God's plan is that man would dwell upon all the face of the earth. From Asia to Europe, from America to Africa, to, to, to Africa, to Australia, to all the face, all the face of the earth, wherever the grand land is, God's plan is that man would dwell upon all of them. Okay, we have we have it already, Genesis chapter number one. And verse, verse 9 and verse number 10. The Bible says, And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. Verse 10. And God called the, the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called his seas. And God saw that it was good. So this dry land, God's plan is that men would dwell, dwell upon all the dry lands. Upon the earth. That's what the Bible says in that Isaiah chapter 40, 44 and verse 45 and verse 18, where we read, the Bible says, He created it not in vain. He formed this earth to be inhabited. He formed it to be inhabited, that men would dwell upon the face, all the face of the earth, all the face of the dry ground. He wants men to be there. And there are so many, there are many dry lands today upon this earth that has not been inhabited, that have not been inhabited. Many dry lands that have not been inhabited. Meaning, meaning that God is still expecting man to expound some more. Because that purpose, that purpose has not yet been achieved. The purpose has not been achieved. And yet, with the few close to close to eight billion people, seven point something billion, close to eight billion people upon, upon planet Earth, and yet some other people are still thinking that if they are too much. You did not create, how can you be thinking that the population of the earth is too much when you did not create the earth? You don't even know from the scriptures, the manual of the creator. You don't know from scriptures what his plans are for the earth. 
And some people are claiming that they're just too much. Human beings are too much. God says they should dwell upon all the face of the earth. He never, he created the earth not in vain, but to be inhabited. He made it to be inhabited, to be lived in by men upon all the face of the earth, spread, live on all the face of the earth. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, chapter number 14, verse 28, the Bible says, in the multitude of, of people is the king's honor. In the multitude of people is the king's honor. He also talks about the kings of the king of kings. In the multitude of people, when there are so much people, it's an honor to the king. Proverbs chapter number 14 and verse 28. In the multitude of people is the king's honor. But in the want of people is the destruction of the prince. Imagine that. In the want, when there is lack of people. But in the multitude, when people are many, is the king's honor. The same way it pleases God when human beings increase, multiply. Remember the first command he gave to man is be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, fill the earth. Proverbs chapter number is on, is on the screen. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 28. The Bible says, in the multitude of people is the king's honor, but in the want of people is the destruction of the prince. When people are lacking, it doesn't, it, it's not an honor to the prince. It's the destruction of the prince. That's why in the book of Revelation, the Bible says there are some multitude of people like sea. Because God wants to see multitude of people People, people, even his angels, the Bible says they are uncountable. If you study the book of Hebrews to number 12, if you study it from verse 22 into verse 24, the Bible tells us that we have come unto Mount Zion into an innumerable company of angels, uncountable company of angels. If they are countable company of angels, God wants this world also to be inhabited by uncountable people. This one they're telling us 8 billion. It's too small. And yet human beings want to fight against. That's why I'm telling you, this earth is being washed. It's a warning to the nations. Because now the nations are trying to go contrary to the, to the plan and purposes of the creator of the heaven and the earth. He didn't create this world to be, to be void. To lack people. In the multitude of people is the king's honor. There's an honor. It gives to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords that his plans concerning the earth is being fulfilled. When they get to heaven and see an innumerable company of angels, uncountable angels, what are they going to do? They say it's going to be too much. Let's reduce the number of the angels. Really? In the multitude of people is the king's honor. I'm taking you somewhere. Praise God. So when God created the earth, he created it God created the earth. That's our first point. Two, second point, he created it and, and for, for it to be inhabited by men. That men should cover all the, live in all the face of the earth. Everywhere. Let there be people, multitude of people. Remember God, was, that's why God placed enough natural resources to feed the world. They're saying Africa is poor. Africa is not poor. Africa is the richest continent on planet Earth. The human beings, the individuals can be, the capital, they can be poor. That was not God's plan. God's plan is that the, the wealth, remember we read something in the book of Ecclesiastes, the Bible says, we're going to get to that in a minute anyway. The Bible says the profit of the Earth is for all. The, the, the resources God placed on planet Earth could sustain, even if the world turns to 100 billion people today, the resources on planet Earth can sustain them. And there is enough dry land, dry ground to sustain them. And the multitude of people is the king's honor. It brings honor to God when people multiply. Jesus, let me give you two scriptures in the, in the New Testament. In John chapter number 15, Jesus speaking, and Jesus said, Hearing is my father glorified, 
that you bear much fruit. I think verse number eight, let me look for it and give it, and give it to you right now. Let me give it to you now. John chapter 15. Verse number eight. Yep. Verse number eight. The Paracadeco Shadakan the Pigidit. Are you still there? The Bible says, This is Jesus. Hearing is my Father, or in this is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit. Fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. Come on here. My Father is glorified when you bear much fruit. That is why the church has left mushroom church to mushroom churches now. They have entered the mega churches and it's bring, bringing pleasure to God. It's bringing, it's bringing joy to God. The church moved from two to ten people, twenty people. It's moved into thousands of people assembling when Jehovah God and the host of heavens are looking down on earth. See a multitude of people gathering in one place, gathering all over the world to praise Jehovah God. Heaven is excited. Papa God is excited. That you bear much fruit. The multitude of people is the king's honor. And it cannot be stopped. It cannot be stopped. No, it cannot be stopped. Herein is my father glorified that you bear much fruit, not little fruit. And so shall you be my disciples indeed. That is Jesus speaking. Praise God. So we have God created the earth and wants the earth to be filled up. He said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, cover all the face of the earth. I want human beings to cover all the face of the earth. That's what the Bible says, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is going to be praised. Because from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, all over the world, we are not all on the same time zone. So in different time zones, some people are waking up in the morning, some are already going down. The name of the Lord is being praised from all across the globe. That's why he did not make the whole world to be one time zone. This person is waking up in the morning. This person is going to bed. All of them are praying to God. Multitude of people. People everywhere. That is the plan. So if Satan wants to attack this, Satan will attack that plan so that it doesn't happen. I said the world is being watched. Now let me tell you. Now, let's get to the third point now because now we've established that the earth was made by God and God made it not to created it not in vain, but to be inhabited that men should live upon all the face of the earth. And I said there are dry lands today that have not been inhabited yet. There are islands that have not been inhabited yet, and God is looking. What are these people doing? Explore these things. Praise God. Are we together? Now, after God made it, he created, he put watchers to watch the earth to see if his plans have been taken, have been fulfilled or not. Let's go to the book of Daniel chapter number 4. Let's read verse number 17. Praise God, I hope we'll, we'll have some time to run this off today. Reiki tele pola taya. Oh, sha, 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 sha. Sha, 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 sha. We might not finish this tonight. It's already past seven, really. Praise God. All right, we're in Daniel chapter number four. Let's see verse 17. Praise the Lord. Daniel chapter four, verse number 17. The Bible says, This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomever he will and set it upon it up, up over it the basest of men. Now I want you to see, he said this matter is by the decree of the watchers. God placed watchers to be watching. For example, let me give you something. Remember when God created the Garden of Eden and placed Adam and Eve there. When Adam and Eve sinned and God drove them out of the garden, God also placed Cherubs 
to watch over that place. Let man come back into that place. So, God placed watchers to watch cherubs, different levels of angels. So, upon the earth also, he kept watchers. I'm going to explain more about this, this decree of the watchers. Say this thing. He was talking to this man, to this king. He said, this is by the decree of the watchers. I told you that this earth, the earth is being watched because the word of God, if you study the book of Isaiah chapter 55, if you start reading from verse number 10 to verse number 11, the Bible says his word shall not return unto him void. It must prosper, accomplish that purpose for which he sent it. It must prosper in that which he pleased. So God placed watchers to be watching the earth. There are watchers. And this, I'm saying that this, what I'm telling you, is by the decree, the words of the watchers. Go to the book of Jeremiah, chapter number four. Let's see verse number 16 and verse number 17. Jeremiah, chapter four. Let's read verse 16. Let's read verse 17. Gitan in Kriti Lukusata, Kriti Kriti Telokruti Yata, Likriti Kalakos Kijin Tebra de Hedeka. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, praise the Lord. The Bible says, Jeremiah chapter number 4, we are reading verse 16, we are reading verse 17. Make a mention to the nations, tell the nations. Make ye mention to the nations. That's why we are saying warning to the nations. The earth is being watched. Make ye mention to the nations. Behold, publish against Jerusalem that watchers come from a far country and give out their voice against the cities of Judah. Make ye mention. Let the nations know Make ye mention to the nations. Behold, publish against Jerusalem that watchers come from a far country. They're not, they're country. The country where they come up from is not from this country. It's from a very far country. And give out their voice against the city, cities of Judah. So even as they have cities all around the world, God placed watchers and they are reporting, these watchers are reporting back to Papa God. What is really happening on earth? What is happening in all the cities? What is happening in all the countries of this earth? They are reporting to God. Watch as he said, they give and give out their, their voice against the cities of Judah. As lepers of a field are, of, of, as, as keepers, sorry, as keepers of a field are they against her roundabout because she had been rebellious against me, saith the Lord. So these watchers are reporting against the cities because they have been rebellious against God. They aren't following God's plans. I want to show you a little bit about the lepers, the, the watchers. I want to show you a little bit about the watchers. Go to Second Chronicles chapter number. Anywhere we stop today, we can just uh, as our time as, as soon as our time is up, I promise you, I just stop. Second Chronicles, but we are going to share the grace by eight. I promise. Second Chronicles chapter number sixteen and verse number nine. Second Chronicles chapter sixteen and verse number nine. There was one of the services. I was saying something about the eyes of the Lord, and someone said they need to hear that. I just want to show you something about that now. I'm saying I'm. Um, um, I, will, I will talk about it when I treat this topic. Second Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 9. He said, remember that place, he said, make mention to the nations. That's why we're teaching on the warning to the nations. The earth is being watched. Watchers are giving reports. They're giving report back to God. Second Chronicles chapter number 16 and verse 9. The Bible says, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the earth. That's where I want to stop. 
For the eyes of the Lord run through the eyes of the Lord, the eyes. We're going to explain this thing. The eyes of the Lord. The eyes of the Lord. They are running to and fro the earth to show himself strong on the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. We are hearing thou hast done foolishly. Now look at this. He says, hearing thou hast done foolishly. Therefore from henceforth thou shalt shalt have wars. So the eyes of the Lord that runs to and fro. The eyes of the Lord. What does he say? He said the eyes of the Lord. God has watchers. Those watchers are his eyes. That are monitoring, watching everything that are happening, everything that is happening on earth. And they're giving report back to him. These eyes of the Lord, I said they are the watchers. For example, in this particular case now, the Bible says, you have done foolishly. Hearing thou hast done foolishly. Therefore, from henceforth thou shalt, thou shalt have war. These eyes of the Lord, these watchers, so that this king had done foolishly. I said, for that reason, you're going to have wars. Now, let's go to the book of Zechariah, chapter number 4. We, told you, we just talked about the eyes of the Lord. Zechariah, chapter 4, and verse 10. Praise God. I... I mean, I told you before, I'm a teacher and run through several scriptures. You just have to pardon me. That is, I can't do without that. Hallelujah. Is that correct? For they shall rejoice and see the plummets in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. With those seven. They are the eyes, these seven, they are the eyes of the Lord which run to and fro from the from the whole earth. So that's why I told you, he said there are seven. There are seven. And they run to and fro. They are the eyes of the Lord. They are the ones watching things for the Lord and giving back reports. That's why in that day, Daniel chapter 4 and verse 17, he said, This is by the decree of the watchers. So these seven, the Bible says, they are the eyes of the Lord which run to and fro. To the earth. So when the Bible says in that Chronicles we have just read before that the eyes of the Lord run towards us to and forth the earth, it's not as if God is just looking like this, looking like all throughout the, all the earth. No, 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 he has his eyes that are keeping him report, even though he knows all things. Go to Revelation. Let's establish this point. Revelation chapter number three and verse number six. Revelation chapter six, chapter three. Sorry, and verse number six. Revelation three and verse number six. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Lati Gitika Rakute Prakada Giti Metolatush. Reki Rikangranin Nakosia. Reki le Braktu Lukrutiki Prakti Zanti Gibradush. Rebi Rikala do Kusata. Revelation to Patreon verse number six. I'm trying to be a little bit fast so that we can if we can cover up something reasonable today or round it off today. Revelation to the five and six, sorry. Revelation chapter 5 and verse number 6. Chapter 5, not 3. Sorry, chapter 5 and verse number 6. Hallelujah. The Bible says, And I beheld a law in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elder stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns. This lamb has seven horns and seven eyes. Thank you. Yeah. Seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits. which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. You see it? You see it? From Chronicles, Second Chronicles, he told us the, for the eyes of the Lord, eyes of the Lord run to and fro the earth. And Zechariah tells us that with those seven, which are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro the earth, the revelation explains it better for us that these seven eyes, which are the seven spirits, they are the watchers, several spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. I'm dealing with something different. I'm not dealing with Isaiah number 11 and verse number 1 and verses 1 and 2. 
That's not what I'm dealing with. I'm dealing with something different now. The seven eyes which roll to and fro the earth. And they are, when you talk about seven spirits, it, at times we should just understand something. It's not, it, it, whether it's talking about the Holy Spirit, I'm not, I'm not saying exactly that it's talking about the Holy Spirit because even angels are spirits also. Angels are spirits also. So when we just see the Spirit of God or something, it does not necessarily mean uh, 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 it just has to do with the Spirit of God. Whatever. Angels are spirit. Bible says, are they not ministering spirits? Sent for to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation in Hebrews chapter number one and verse seven. So there are different spirits. There are spirits that are angels. There are spirits that are not angels. There are spirits that uh, know that there is the Holy Spirit. God. But these ones are called watchers. Now, watchers, they give back reports, seven of them all across the world. They are monitoring everything. What did they tell us? They first told us that they, they, they and I am not saying exactly that one is for one, one continent, because later they told us the continents were five. Later they said seven. However, even if they like, they make it nine or something. I'm not saying that from that seven means that one is watching. One. It might be, but I don't know exactly. Maybe that one has to cover one planet. But they are getting reports and returning back to God. Now, remember our first point, the earth created by God. Two, he created it for man to be inhabit, to, to inhabit and also to fill all the earth. To fill all the earth. And he placed watchers that are bringing reports to him. Now, if you study because of time, I'm just going to give you back uh, a breakdown of some, some places. If you study the book of Genesis chapter number 11, if you started it from verse 1, just read from verse 1 to number 8, to verse 8. All right. You will see how, how that in, in Genesis chapter number 1, if you start reading from verse 1 to 8, how that human beings that were on the earth that particular time, they gathered together. Yes, they said, no, listen, we will stay in one particular place. We will be, let us build a tower. And let's go meet God up there. Now, if you understand, majorly they think it is not necessarily about the tower because heaven is spiritual. Jesus ascended to heaven this way. There is no possibility of them building that tower and getting to that place. But the thing is, that unit, the major thing, secret behind that thing is the fact that they refuse to scatter across. Then if you read, let's read verse 5. Genesis chapter number 11, verse 5. Let me show you. Verse 5 says, And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men built it. Then verse 7, same place. Go to, let us go down and they, have, and they have confound their language that they may not understand one another. So the, verse 8, So the Lord scattered them abroad from things upon the face of all the earth. And they left off to build the city. So God came down, verse 8. Go to just, all right, you have verse 7, verse 8. Verse 8 now. So the Lord scattered them abroad from things upon the face of all the earth to fulfill his original plan. His original plan is not, is not that for them. It's not for them to stay in one particular city, in one particular place. Even it happened to the disciples of Jesus Christ. Jesus told them in Acts chapter number 1 and verse 8. Jesus said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and unto all the utmost part of the earth. And they did not get it. They all remained in Jerusalem. They were all in Jerusalem. What happened? Temptations and trials, persecution arose that scattered them abroad. And they, start, they went out. And started preaching the gospel. Everyone that scattered, everybody ran away, and they were all scattered. That was actually fulfilling God's plan to take the gospel to all the ends of the earth, or to the utmost parts of the earth. So in Genesis chapter number 11, they, they came together. They refused to live on all the face of the earth. And God came down, scattered their languages, and scattered them upon all the face of the earth to fulfill his original plan for the earth. That the original plan of the earth is not for it to be void, but to be inhabited all the face of the earth. Human beings should live in all the face of the earth. God came down because the watchers were watching. Praise God. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. I'm trying to be fast so that I could round up here. Hallelujah. Now, if you go to the book of Ecclesiastes, Genesis, the same Genesis chapter number. Eighteen, eighteen. If you start reading from verse twenty into verse twenty-three. All right, let's read verse. Let me just let's read. Let's try and read this, and we'll round off here. Genesis chapter number eighteen. Let's read verse twenty. Let's read verse twenty-one, so that you just see exactly that point I'm trying to. And I'll just, I'll just break it down there, and we'll, we'll try to. Round off from there. Praise God. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter number 18. Let's read verse 20, verse 21, verse 22, verse 23. All right. Praise God. Let's start from verse 20, please. Verse 20, please. Verse 20, let me read verse 20. And the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sins is very grievous. Now, verse 21, okay, let's go. Verse 21. I will go down now and see whether they have done accord altogether according to the cry of it, which is come unto me. If not, I will know. Now, look at verse 21. That verse 21 is cool. I want to pass across a point there for you, which is great. Verse 21, the Bible says, this cry of Sodom and Gomorrah went up to God. And verse 21, the Bible says, I will go. God is saying, I will go down and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which is come unto me. And if not, I will know. The cry of it, the things that I have heard that have come up unto me, some people reported this thing to him. That's one, of, that's one thing I want you to see. He said, this cry that is all together, all together according to the cry of it, which is come up unto me. If not, I will know. Let me go and see if what I heard is really true. The watchers reported. Praise God. And you know what happened? In the end, God destroyed the city. Destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah because everything, when God came down, God sent his men and they came down and they saw that everything, everything they had, Papa God had, was exactly the same thing. And he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah with fire. This same earth, listen, is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. He's still watching the earth. And listen, every word, remember Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away. Matthew chapter number 24 and verse 35. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Listen, let me conclude by telling you this. There is no plan by humanity to come against the original plan of God for the earth that will prosper. No. They want to reduce the... But God said they will eat. man should inhabit all the earth. A man must inhabit all the earth. There is no plan of the wicked by any group of people to reduce the population of the earth when the, when the earth has, when all the dry lands of the earth have, have not been occupied yet. There is no plan that will prosper. God's eyes are upon the earth. The Bible says his eyes run to and through the whole earth by his watchers and they are bringing reports to him. The Bible says in the multitude of people is the king's honor. And now they want some group of people who want to reduce the population of the earth. They cannot this world is being watched. And the same God who fought against any group of people, I have several verses to show you, but because of time, any time man rises up against this original plan of God for earth, God always come down to destroy their plans. Because this earth has to be inhabited. He, he didn't make it to be void. The Bible says he didn't create it, he didn't create it to be void but to be inhabited and to be upon all the face of the earth. Each time they had plans, contrary to that original plan, God always come down and scatter the plans. The same way, every plan now going on. I bet you in the name of the Lord, I tell you, 
by the word of the Lord, it shall not prosper. The same God will frustrate, the Bible says he frustrates the tokens of the liars and make it the diviners mad. He turns back the wisdom of the wise and makes the knowledge, their knowledge foolish. That is our God. Praise God. Hallelujah. They are asking, where is God? And I tell you, by the word of God, it shall not prosper. Neither shall it come to pass. Hallelujah. Because of time, we're just going to round off here. We're just going to round off here. Praise God. If I get into something, it's like it's going to, uh, we're going to go further, further than this. We just open our mouth and begin to pray. The Bible says, the weapons of our warfare are not canal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. No plan of the wicked, no plan of the devil, no plan of some group of people to tell us that the, that the earth created by God to be inhabited by men. Shouldn't be like that. No. No, 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 no. It cannot happen. Open your mouth and begin to talk to the Lord. The Bible says the profit of the earth is for all. The profit of the earth is for all. Ecclesiastes chapter number 5 and verse 9. Moreover, the profit of the earth is for all. All, all. The king himself, the king himself is served by the field. The profit of the earth is for all. Open your mouth and begin to talk to the Lord right now. Open your mouth and decree and declare that God's plan concerning the earth to be inhabited, Lekosha is coming to pass. In the multitude of people is the king's honor. Jesus said, Herein is my father glorified that you bear much fruit. That glorifies my father. When multitudes gather all across the globe, when there are people on the earth, it brings glory. It means that God's original plan, what he said in Genesis chapter number 1 and verse 26 to 28, is being fulfilled. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. That is God's plan. Then the caliber. Open your mouth and begin to declare. Let God that God's word is coming to pass. It shall not return to him void. He must prosper in that which he has sent it. No plan to reduce. COVID-19 cannot reduce. They said it's 200 and something thousand people that died. It's too small. And it cannot cross that because it shall not, they shall not, they shall not proceed any further. They shall not proceed any further. The plans of the wicked has been frustrated. This earth is going to be inhabited. Angry. Let's frustrate every plan. It doesn't matter who they are. Kings and kingdoms shall all pass away. Kings and kingdoms. We don't have time. Friday night, I'm going to get into something. History has proven it. Whoever told Hitler that Israel can become a nation today? Whoever told Hitler? Listen, it can a parika. Isaiah to the number seven and verse seven, please. Isaiah seven and verse seven. Kere kanakosha. It shall not stand. Neither shall it come to pass. Isaiah seven and verse seven. Whoever told Hitler that Israel would become a nation today will stand up and become what it is. The word of God must surely come to pass. God created of one blood of all nations of the earth to dwell upon all the face of the earth. Every human being upon the earth, black, white, live and let's live. Let the black live. Let the whites live. Let the whites live. Let the blacks live. Let the Asians live. Let everybody live. All these things to bring glory to God. For thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are and we are created. Revelation chapter number 4 and verse 11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive honor, glory, and power. For thou hast created all things, and for your pleasure they are, and we are created. Thou hast created all things. The earth is the Lord, the fullness thereof, the world, and them that dwell therein. In the multitude of people is the king's honor. God is glorified when millions and billions of people are upon the earth. 
billions. So they should be warned. They are going contrary to the word of God, to the word of God, and to the plans of God. And God, I just gave them history. Genesis chapter number eight, they never succeeded. Genesis chapter number 11, sorry. They never succeeded. Genesis chapter number 18, God came down also and saw destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. The watchers are giving reports to Papa God that, listen, some people on planet Earth want to go contrary to his word. And I promise you they're not going to succeed. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are, and we are created. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, open your mouth and decree, and declare that even those who have not given birth this period, they sh- I told you one of the nights, they are coming out of this lockdown with pregnancy to increase the number of, 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 of people on planet Earth. Those who have not given birth, open your mouth. People shall begin to reproduce. The profit of the Earth can sustain the number of people on the planet Earth. Even if they like, they don't get to 20 billion. God has made enough resources. If the wickedness of men will not allow men, will not allow the even distribution of, of, of the profit of the Earth. So much need. Natural resources laid in the ground for men to enjoy. And it's for all. It's for the blacks, it's for the whites, it's for every race, every color, every tribe. Open your mouth and thank the Lord, the, the name of the Lord for that. Praise God. Father, we give you praise. We give you the glory. We worship you. We thank you for this moment with you. We thank you for your word. Rata, may grant the kingdom and most casa practically in the recola. Rekede, kradiko para grintish kasi brinte la tu vremita la grade ratalas. We give you praise, O oh God. Heavenly Father, we adore you. Re grant to Klobaratis Kashalaha. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but your word shall not pass away. Your word, O oh God, is that we'll be fruitful, we multiply, and replenish the earth. I decree and declare that every barren, everyone called barren, everyone, anyone, O oh God, who has not given birth, Lord, is coming out of this lockdown, O oh God, with pregnancy. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, your word shall be fulfilled in their lives. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Probably you're streaming online. You're not yet born again. Listen, let me tell you, this is the right time for you to be born again. You don't have tomorrow. The Bible says today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. I just want to lead you to my Jesus. Meet my Jesus. Run for your salvation now. Now, 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 now. This is the time. You don't have tomorrow. You do not have tomorrow. Praise God. So just pray this simple prayer with me and you are going to be born again. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. I come to you today. Thank you, Father, for your plan of salvation for me by sending Jesus for me. Therefore, today, I receive Jesus into my life. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Lord of my life. I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me eternal life. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for saving me. I am saved. I'm born again. And I will never perish. I give you the glory. I give you the praise. In Jesus' wonderful name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. If you just got born again and from all across the group, please, Contact us and let us know. Contact us and let us know. God bless you. God bless you. And if you are around Barcelona, as soon as the lockdown is over, by May, we are going to be having services. Praise God. I'm going to give you how the time, how it's going to go. By Maybe by Sunday, we're going to break down for you how we are going to worship by May, after, after 11th of May. Praise God. You're looking for, according to the, according to the timing or the the breakdown given by the federal government of Spain. So if you are around Barcelona, I'm looking forward to seeing you in the month of May. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we just worship the Lord with an offering? The account details of the ministry is right there under, uh, below the, co- at, at the comment section, below this broadcast, below it there, at the comment section, you will see everything about the account. If you're giving your tithe, you're giving an offering unto the Lord. The details are just there. Praise God. The Lord has blessed you. You're still working on whatever. God has blessed you in any form. He expects his own blessing with an offering and tithe and seed and everything. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for the opportunity to give. 
Bless your holy name, Lord, for this wonderful time. Lord, thank you for accepting our offerings, our tithes, our seed. To you be the glory, to you be all the honor in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said it's more blessed to give than to receive. We are not to receive us only. Lord, we are give us. We give to your holy name, Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' wonderful name we have prayed. I pray for you all. I pray that you're blessed and protected in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. No weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. No weapon fashioned formed against you shall prosper. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we frustrate, I frustrate every token of the liars against your life. They are liars. The Bible says, let all men be liars and let God be true. God is true over your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the word of God comes to pass over your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we give you praise I give you the glory. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray God that your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. In Jesus' wonderful name we have prayed. Hallelujah. If you're also streaming on Facebook, your candidate is going to be there in a few minutes from now. The candidate is also going to be there. If you want to sow your seed or give your offering or your tithe, the candidate is going to be there on Facebook any moment from now. Praise God. Hallelujah. God bless you all. God bless you all. God bless you all. Please, please listen. Um, our midnight prayers still continues. Our midnight prayers still continues. 12 midnight till a few minutes, uh, quarter past or 12, 17 past one, thereabout. Praise God. Let's not be tired. Please, let's not be tired. Uh, you can see if you're if you're actually following some things that are happening around the world, you will find out that our prayers are making great differences. This great difference. What, what we are seeing right now is not actually what they planned. Praise God. The Bible says they shall proceed no further. This point that they have got into is the last point that they will, they, they will ever get to. Hallelujah. Jehovah God is hearing our prayers and is intervening. So our bring that prayer still continues until after the lockdown is over. And on Friday, midnight prayer, the midnight prayer is going to be from 12 to 3 a.m. 12 midnight to 3 a.m. for three hours. We'll pray, we'll study a little bit, and we pray again, just like we've been doing for the past two weeks. Praise God. Tomorrow, Thursday, is our general fasting and prayer times. Uh, Please make sure you pray, make sure you fast, all right? Make sure you fast, make sure you pray. Thursday, we're still going to be praying midnight. Uh, I, I'm not too sure if I'm going to be on tomorrow to round up the prayer for you in the evening. But let's see, I might, I might not. Just make sure you subscribe. Make sure you subscribe and make sure you, so that when we come on air, you will know. So if I'm on by tomorrow, 5 p.m., I, I, I don't just do things because, because it makes sense. I do things when I'm late. All right, so but if I'm just look down to my spirit from late tomorrow evening by 5 p.m., I'm going, I'm going to come up, but I'll tell you by midnight if it's going to be like that. And if I'm late to do that, I do that. I know you're doing because we are doing so. But make sure you subscribe so that when we come on, you'll be notified. Praise God. And Sunday's communion service, make sure that you have your bread, your, your communion drink, whatever drink that you can use for that communion so that we'll have our communion from our homes. Praise God. By the by Sunday, we'll give you the breakdown how the services are going to go in in May. We'll give you the breakdown how we are we're just asking, praying, and asking the Lord for better direction on how it will go in May as soon as the lockdown, because the federal government has actually released and also um, released us to a particular extent. It says one third, one third, the graduation should be one third of the of the general population. So we'll see how we're going to divide that and give you information concerning that. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Father, we give you praise. We give you the glory. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us today. Thank you because the plans of the wicked, Lord, are frustrated. Your word and your word alone will surely come to pass in our lives. In Jesus' wonderful name we have prayed. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you all. Have a great time. Let's share the grace in fellowship. It's, six, it's 8 o'clock. The grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest in abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy follow us all the days of our lives and will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. In Him we live and move and have our being. In Him I live and move 
and have my being. In this 2020, I am showing forth the praises of God. And who am I? I am choosing royal, holy, peculiar, and I'm showing forth the praises of God. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. God bless your family. See you by, by midnight. Hallelujah. Warning to the nations, the earth is being watched. Hallelujah. We are not disadvantaged at all. Bye.